Hey everybody, it's Adam at Ghostbeast Place. Uh, this is the most exciting time of year for us because uh, you probably wonder why I'm sitting on the floor in a closet, uh, but we have baby Gila monsters that are hatching as we speak. They're coming out of the egg. They're, yeah, it's, it's an amazing time here at Ghostbeast Place. Uh, seeing Gila monsters hatch is absolutely one of the best things you can see uh, well, for me and people who love Gila monsters. But yeah, we're gonna look at some of the babies we've had. We've actually had four eggs hatch this year. Uh, three of them have hatched. Uh, one of them is still coming out. So we want to get some video for you guys and try, kind of show you how the process goes with baby Gila monsters. So come on, let's take a look. So back to the first question. Why are we sitting in my closet watching an incubator with eggs in it? Well, obviously the Gila monster eggs are here, but why are they here? We use this closet because this is the most temperature controlled place in my entire house. Believe me, I tested every nook and cranny of this house uh, for at least a year before I got Gila monsters. And I found this is the most temperature stable place in the entire house. So this is why you're sitting in a closet uh, because there's no sunlight that comes in. There's no big fluctuations in temperature throughout the entire incubation period, which is about five months. So Gila monsters really need to have a nice stable environment to grow. Let's go ahead and check these eggs out. So here is the interior of our incubator. We keep a very stable temperature and a very stable humidity throughout the entire 138 day incubation period for these Gila monsters. Um, as you see, I have a little camera in here, a little webcam to kind of monitor how the progress is doing. The incubator is kept immaculately clean as so is our egg boxes. These are sim containers, which I'm sure you heard over seen before. Uh, we do use these over Pangea hatch. This is our, our substrate of choice. And as you see right there, little baby Gila monster. Now this one is the last one to poke out from the other Gila monsters that were born here. This is, yeah, you know, I always get a little nervous when the, it takes a couple extra days for one to come out. But uh, yeah, here's, here's, here he is poking out, him or her. Kind of, this uh, is an interesting process because it does take a couple of days for them to fully come out of the shell. Uh, one of the things I love right before they hatch is how you can see the Gila monster through the egg. I think that's really cool that uh, you can start seeing them through there. And usually when they start doing this, it takes uh, anywhere between three to five days for them to fully come out of the shell. This Gila monster just started last night and it's about a day into hatching. As you see, it kind of each day comes out a little more, a little more, and then they go back and they finish the yolk in there because that is their first meal is finishing that yolk. Here we go. Little Gila monster a little closer. Uh, we did get some video of some of our other Gila monsters as they were coming out of the shell, which we'll put into a video here and you can check that out as well. Maybe a part of But yeah, here's this little guy. He's kind of like, why are you disturbing me for? I like it nice and dark and humid. So here's our little Gila monster coming out. We don't want to bug them too much because we don't want them to not finish their yolk. That is a very important thing that they do because if they don't, they won't have their first meal, kind of like mother's milk. So we, want to, we don't want to bug them too much. We definitely don't want to pick up the Gila uh, in his egg and definitely don't want to move him around too much. So anyways, we'll let this little guy rest and we'll, we'll have a little, here's a little video reel. A close up of the egg I took before. All right, so we got to see a really cool baby Gila monster coming out of the incubator. Uh, that's obviously the first part, uh, not the first part, that's the longest part where they got to sit there for five months uh, and, and incubate and got to be the right temperature and everything else. Baby care is also very important. You don't want to stick them uh, into a regular Gila environment because they can get in infections and not do so well. So uh, back here is our little rack system, and we'll kind of go over some of the stuff we do with the babies and how we raise them. So when the babies are first born, they're measured, weighed, and then put into these little shoe boxes in our rack system here. Uh, all we have in there is some paper towels, uh, water, and of course the Gila monster. Here's one of our nice Gila monsters we produced this year. A lot of black on it. As you can see, its belly is, is nice and full of yolk. That's his first meal. Beautiful, gorgeous looking Gila monster. But anyway, so here is one of our other shoe boxes, which has the baby Gila monster in it. As you see, nice, clean, simple setup. The baby Gila is only on paper towels with a bowl of water. And there's also heat underneath. There's a heat strip underneath it at about 100 degrees. Uh, the babies do sit on the heat and they do love the humidity. Don't forget, they came from 100% humidity when they're in the egg in the incubator and they come out. So we keep them at the same temperature and humidity. We do spray it every day. We keep it nice and moist in there so they have plenty of humidity. Uh, we don't put them on shavings until they're a little bit older. The umbilical cord after they hatch out is all healed up. 
If you look at the bottom of them, you can see that it hasn't, it hasn't quite healed yet. The other important thing is we want to make sure, obviously, it's nice and clean. And hey, little Gila, welcome to the world. The last thing you want is to have a dirty container and have that, that get infected as it's, as it's healing there. So, anyway, there's one of our little baby Gila's. I don't like to stress them out too much. Like in this area, there's no lights in it. Uh, nice to keep them stress-free. After about a week or two, I'll try and feed them a mouse and see how they do. And then I'll also move them over to the, uh, the reptile chips, the sandy chips. Because they can dig around. I'll put a hide in there. But for the first week or so, I like to watch them and make sure they're doing okay. Their umbilical cord is healing properly and everything. Uh, they're spicy. Don't let them fool you. They're cute as heck. But these little baby Gila monsters are spicy little things. So they can definitely... Uh, give you a little bite. So to be careful when you're working with baby Gila's or any Gila's. So here's another one of our little baby Gila's. Uh, I just want to show you guys the, as you see a spicy little guy, come on. Come on, sweetie. I don't like to stress him out too much, but I do want to show you guys and how that's healing. As you see, it's still, still pretty fresh under there. And they got yolk, uh, belly full of yolk. There we go. Beautiful, nice little guy. Here we go. He didn't bite me. Thank you very much. I am wearing uh, bite-proof gloves or bite-resistant gloves, I should say. I don't like to say bite-proof or anything. But here's one of the little babies. As you see, nice, simple container. This one, I defecated once. Uh, we got to change that immediately. Keep it nice and very clean in there, as uh, sterile as possible. So definitely paper towels for the first little bit. But for now, we want to keep him nice and safe and make sure that heals on the belly. Well, guys, that wraps up another episode of Ghost Beast Place. Thanks for stopping by and checking out our Gila monsters. And uh, it's really nice to, nice to see us uh, with the baby Gila's and uh, Gila's hashing out of the egg. I mean, how, what's more exciting than that, right? Uh, baby Gila monster coming out of the egg. Um, if you have bred Gila monsters before, you're thinking of it. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of work. And having that baby hatch is worth every second uh, and every every pain and every, every frustration you went through over the years. So uh, from Ghost Beast Place... Love your monsters, and we'll talk to you soon.